Hey, what's good, y'all? Today, I wanted to talk to you briefly about the part mixer and the pattern setting adjustments that can be made from within it. All right, so on the 505, you can have eight parts per pattern, and the part mixer is basically the internal channel mixer, which allows you to adjust settings such as volume, panning, and transpose for each of the eight parts within your pattern. The eight parts consist of one rhythm track, conveniently labeled with an R, and up to seven instrument tracks. Now let's talk about the settings. If you look to the left hand side of the part mixer, you'll see level, pan, key shift, reverb, delay, effects, and mega mix. These are the settings that can be accessed and adjusted by using the sliders in the part mixer. Depending on which item is selected, the sliders adjust the values that correspond to the track number at the bottom of the slider. So, for example, if the level setting is selected, the first slider will adjust the level for the rhythm track. How do we know what's currently selected? We have indicator lights to tell us where we're at. To select a different setting, all we got to do is press the mixer select button and we move down the list. Uh, holding shift also will take you back up the list. So let's say we're adjusting our levels. How do we know what our values are? Well, just push the tempo mixer button. Pressing the tempo mixer button pulls up a visual display and we can now dial in our adjustments to our liking. Now one thing you will notice is that it's kind of hard to dial in exact values using the sliders. No worries, you have increment and decrement buttons to the right that allow you to move up and down by 1, or if you hold shift, you can move up and down by 10. Moving on to the pan setting, moving a slider up, pans to the right, down to the left. Again. Increment and decrement buttons do the same as they would for the level setting. Now moving down to key shift. Uh, key shift is basically transpose and it works exactly the same as the level setting with one exception. Instead of moving up and down in increments of 10, you're actually moving up and down in increments of 12 uh, because you're traveling up and down in octaves. The ceiling and the floor in terms of octaves would be four octaves. So you move up to a max of 48 semitones and down to a max of 48 semitones. Moving on, reverb and delay work much like the level setting. In pushing the slider up allows you to hear more delay and more reverb. Pushing the slider down takes it all away. Now let's talk about the effects out setting. Now this setting is two different things. The two different things that this setting allows you to do is one, turn on a global effect and two, change the routing of the part that you are on. How do you do this? Well, pushing the slider up turns on the effect. As you can see, Wherever there's a D, meaning dry, there is no effect applied for that associated part which is listed above it. When you move the slider up, you can see it is now turned to E. That tells you the effect is applied. How do we know what effect is applied? Going down to our menu below our keyboard pads, we can see effects under keyboard pad 7. So we would press shift keyboard pad 7 and now we can see the slicer effect is what we have currently selected. Uh, you can also use the jog wheel to change the effect. Holding shift now gives us some other options. These are our routing options. We have DIR1, DIR2, and RHY. DIR1 and DIR2 are routing options for the outputs on the back of the 505. 
If you look at the back of the 505, you will see direct output one and direct output two. Assigning a part to one of those outputs would do just that. It would route the sound to that output. The RHY setting, when selected, tells the 505 to output the sound for individual tones, rhythm tones, according to that tone's individual setting. So if, for example, you had a kit selected and wanted to route a specific sound through the effects but keep everything else dry, you could do that with this setting. Okay, let's move on to the Megamix. So Megamix basically is a function in the 505 that allows you to swap part patterns within your pattern with patterns that are close by. This can be useful if you are trying to add some variation to your pattern. Moving the slider allows you to choose from up to 10 patterns before and 10 patterns after your current pattern. So for example, if the current pattern is pattern 31, you could select from patterns all the way down to 21 and all the way up to 41. One thing to note about the Megamix setting is that after you exit it, the pattern changes will not change back until you select a different pattern. Okay, so that about covers the settings on the left of the part mixer. Now let's talk about these buttons down here. Starting with the part select button. The part select button, when illuminated, allows you to toggle through your parts. As you can see, we have now selected part two. Pressing the buttons to the side of it will allow us to go to our other parts. Pressing patch will allow us to see what parts we are now in. Now, if you notice below the part select text, it says QTZ select in black text with a black border. QTZ select is short for quantize select and is accessed by pressing the shift button and the part select button. QTZ select is basically a quick way to turn on a groove setting you may have set up so that you can adjust it if you are looking to add like swing or quantization to a certain part or the whole track on the fly. If you notice when I press those buttons, all the part lights under the sliders are illuminated. Those lights are telling you that if I'm on, my part is going to be affected by the quantized setting adjustments you make right now. So to isolate the quantized setting adjustments you make, you would simply turn off some of the lights. So if you wanted to only affect the quantization of the rhythm track, you would actually just turn off the other tracks. Okay, moving on. The part mute button does just that. It mutes the parts. When you press a button, if it flashes, it is now muted. Uh, if you notice, some of the buttons are solid and there's actually one that is off. So what does that mean? Well, as you know, the blinking buttons represent muted parts with musical data. The solid lights represent the unmuted parts with musical data and the lights that are off represent the parts that have no musical data, meaning there are no notes recorded for that particular part. To the right of the part mute button is the mute control button. This button allows you to record mute changes you may make uh, on the fly. So if you are in pattern record and you want to, you know, drop out the drum kit for a second, you could actually record that uh, mute. Now let's move on to Tone Select. Tone Select basically allows you to turn on and off certain tones contained within the patches. Uh, the patches in the 505 can be layered with up to four tones, so here is where you would turn those tones uh, on and off. And last but not least, we have the Rhythm Mute button. Rhythm Mute does just that. It mutes the tones within the rhythm part. All right, so that about wraps up the part mixer and the settings that can be adjusted within it. Uh, I know this video was kind of long 
and uh, I tried to make it as short as possible. So I want to thank you for sticking it out with me. And with that being said, I hope you found this video helpful. And if you did, please drop a comment, click the like button, and uh, also subscribe. Don't forget to check out my other 505 videos as well. They're super informative and will help bring you one step closer to figuring out your groove box. All right then, take care. Peace.